My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the seventh Sunday in ordinary time, and today gospel is at the core of what it means to be, you know, Christian. Because is it very important what Jesus said to us? There is no other way that uh, we can be forgiven of our sins if we are not a forgiven people. Uh, it's very clear that to be forgiven, we need to also be, uh, you know, merciful uh, 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 as our Father in heaven is merciful. Why we have to be merciful? Because Jesus has been merciful to us in the way that he died for our sins and because he paid the price of our offenses, now we can go to him and ask forgiveness and we are going to be forgiven not because of the merits that we do here, but because of the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ that he sheds his blood on the cross. So now, there's a lot of things that Jesus said to us in here. Love your enemies and do good to, to those who hate you. Uh, it's hard to forgive somebody who have mistreated you or hurt you or say something bad to you, you know. But uh, the problem is this. It is just like, uh, you know, it, it is like uh, when we, we hold some grudge in our hearts or, or, or some, you know, it is like it's this going to return and we are going to remember and, and feel the same pain and what we have to do to get rid of this uh, kind of feeling that we have in our hearts. Well, we, we need to ask, first of all, understand that we come with the supernatural help of the Lord, right? So we can ask the Lord to help us to forgive. And, 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 and it's a decision because at the end, you know, we have to understand that there is three classes of love that we can experience this life. There is say that I, if, uh, others put seven, but I, I feel like with the Greek definition of love, is, it is enough to understand what I'm talking about. The first one is the, the filial love. And you know, it's the, the, the love that has fathers and sons, sons and daughters, daughters and mothers and fathers. So it is a relationship. This is natural blood love. It's, it's, it's just happened, right? And the other thing is, uh, you know, the, the love that comes from Eros, the attraction between a woman and a man, and they, they get they got the, the married and they have children, right? So this is the second one. But the third one is, is agape. In this agape decision, is a decision. I'm going to love you even if you don't deserve my love. I'm going to do good to you even if you are doing something wrong to me, right? Now, how we can do that? With the help of the Lord. But there is, a, there is something very important here that uh, when we, you know, love and we, we forgive somebody who doesn't deserve our forgiveness, what happened to us? You know, we are getting rid of our bitterness, our hate, our grudge that we have, and we, you know, create a place that the Lord can abide in ourselves. And that is what the Lord is, is, is telling us. You need to forgive, otherwise you are going to carry you know, one load that you are going, it's going to take you down, right? Because if you don't forgive, you're going to have that in your heart. And again, and again, and again. And you are become a bitter person, a, a resentful person, right? A person that, you know, have now a smile. in their, You can smile, but inside you is something that is corrosing your, your, your spirit. Because you feel the pain. And you feel so, that's why it's so important to forgive people, even though they not deserve. I forgive you because I want to, you know, I don't want you to take, I don't want to give you more, you know, power over me. I forgive you because I want to be free from, from this thing that doesn't allow me to, to love. Listen, what happened here in the first reading, sometimes, uh, you know, we just get portions of the Old Testament from the book of uh Samuel, right? But uh, it is important here if I can get the reading anyway. Uh, yeah, okay. Saul was the king of Israel, but he is searching for David. Why he's searching for David? Because somebody said that he's going to betray you, he's going to kill you. So Saul is, is persecuting David, and he entered into the desert with 3,000 people, right? But David also have, you know, he have to, to his people, and he went to his camp, and he, the king was sleeping, and, the, you know, the spear was there. 
right? His spear of the king and his, uh, you know, Abi, Abishai, Abishai, is his, they say, let us kill the king, and that's it. I can give it, I can strike him immediately, and this is, now, we are talking about a man who is, you know, is persecuted, and if they cut, cut him, what is gonna happen to him? They're gonna kill David, right? What would you do? You have your enemy, you have the spear, <laughs> and uh, if it's him or you. And what David said, I not going to do this because if I kill the anointed of the Lord, it's gonna be guilt on me. It's gonna return. What is he saying? But instead, he took the spear and he you know, went to the other side and called the king, I have your spear, I could kill you. What I'm telling you, what people have said to you is wrong and I don't want to kill you because I have the opportunity and I didn't do it. And more, most, moreover, I know that if I attend to your life, you know, I attend to the anointing of the Lord. So, so that is what, what King David did. So he is showing, first of all, that uh, he is telling him, I'm not going against you. I forgive you, but don't kill me, <laughs> right? And, and to make the story short, of course, King David's gonna be, David's gonna be a king at the end, right? So not gonna be killed by, by Saul. So now, what happened here? Rather love your enemies and do good to them, you know, and be merciful as your mother is merciful. Here, there is something that I caught my attention today. Stop judging and you will not be judged. We are experts in judging people. But the problem is, you know, when you render a judgment, if you are a judge, right, you have to be, you know, cannot beat you. You don't, you don't need to hear anybody, right? Because you have to see the evidence and you are going to render your judgment guilt or not guilty. Right? But what happened to us when we judge somebody, we are not only judging, condemning immediately. We condemn immediately with, because our judgment is done guilty, right? And I'm gonna disappear you to my life. I'm not gonna talk to you. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna silence. I'm gonna erase from my contact. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm not even say hello if you cross me because now you're my enemy. Right? So stop charging and you will not be judged. We cannot do that. The, the, the judgment is only for God. And, 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 and David showed very clear, right? That the judgment, if you deserve to die, King Saul, it's God who will decide that, not me, right? So it is very important. Stop condemning and you will not condemn. How many times do we condemn people? And, 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 and when, but we come to church and pray and ask forgiveness. Well, we need to forgive because otherwise we're not going to be forgiven. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the paradox. You want to receive gift. You want to be loved, love one another. You're going to be, you're going to be forgiven forgive others because in the same way that we forgive is the same way that God is going to forgive us in the last judgment. Let us pray together and give thanks to the Lord for, for this beautiful message that today they have because it's important that uh, we be merciful and forgiven people. It doesn't matter how much people hurt us. We know at the end we hold victory if we love one another as the Lord has taught us. Amen.